All right, we're going to go through the water system. I'm on the passenger side. This is your fresh water tank. It has a heat pad underneath it that we talked about that will keep it from freezing. Uh, we don't really have a gauge on this at this point, so you can use a flashlight to kind of go up and down and see. Bottom line is, is every time you turn the bus around, you should fill that tank up and that should give you good adequate water for your trip. Um, the fill for it is on the other side of the coach. Um, I'll walk around and show that. That's how you fill it. Th this is just a uh, an overflow right here. The tank fills up and when it's full, it'll, it'll spit water out of there on the ground. When it's full, it's going to be normal for you to drive around and get a little bit of water uh, out of that overflow vent. Okay, on the other side of the bus is where the sewer tank is. Here is the fill for the fresh water. It is clearly labeled. You'll hook a garden hose up to that and fill that with fresh water. As soon as you turn that on, the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to go inside the bus. You're going to look on the bathroom floor. You're going to look in under the sink. You're looking for a water leak. If for any reason you've sprung a leak, you don't want to stand here for half an hour wondering where the water's going, find out it's going inside the bus. You'll then walk around to the other side, look at the tank, make sure that the water's going in there and that you don't have a problem. Common sense goes a long ways. Okay? This is the sewer tank. Um, <clears throat> here is one of the heat tapes right here. This is nothing that you should mess with when you park the bus and it's cold. This is one of the things that I want to confirm before I leave the bus. I'm going to look at this and I'm going to make sure that, that little red light is on confirming that that heat tape is working. Make sure that I've got pow or power to everything. The sewer hose stays connected. You can carefully fold it and unfold it out. It's hooked right on and then there's a valve clear back in that you will pull that valve. Um, the other trick to this is, is as you pull this out, you actually have to open the, the little cap on the end of it and let it have some air. If that hose is collapsed, it's not going to uh, pull out with a vacuum on it. So you're going to bring the hose up high above where you know it will flow, and you'll crack that a little bit, and you'll pull your hose out. Then you'll put the cap back on and get ready to go to your, your sewer outlet. You'll then come back and pull your valve. When you're going back in, uh, when you're done draining, you'll have to kind of follow it down the hose, so to speak, and, and, and make sure that that hose is empty. We don't, we don't want to have a bunch of liquid in that hose. We want to try and get it as empty as we can. You're then going to have to collapse the hose back up, letting it have some air, and then carefully fold it and tuck it back up in there where it is. Uh, it's pretty easy a lot of times in this sewer tank to see it. Uh, the other thing that's very easy is shut the water pump off, take a flashlight, push the toilet valve and open it and just look down in the tank. Keep in mind that as you're looking down from the toilet, it's about a foot from the, from the toilet bowl down to the deal. Uh, we usually have no issue if this is emptied before every turnaround trip with it... Uh, getting full on us. We've had no problem there. Uh, these latches on the outside of the bus need maintenance once in a while. <clears throat> You're going to want to lube these latches. You're going to want to make sure that these jam nuts are tight and they're adjusted properly. We want these to be fairly tight and it does take a pretty firm push right here. With one hand, push in and then turn with the other. Don't force them. Uh, when you open them, you're going to want to push and relieve the pressure so that this turns easy. If it's not turning easy, there's a problem and you need to relieve the pressure. You've got to push in and, and relieve the pressure of this weather strip um, so that the latch will turn. Uh, a little bit of WD-40 in these. Uh, some WD-40 in the lock. The lock is turned vertical, that means it's unlocked. When you lock these and you put a key in here, 
you have to kind of gingerly work the key a little bit and maybe adjust this a little bit to where it lines up and latches. Okay, we're on the passenger side, or we're on the driver's side, just forward of the exhaust of the drivers. Here we have our propane tanks. We have two of them. They have gauges right on them. It's very easy to monitor it. You also have an automatic switcher deal right here. Okay, you'll always want to run off this outside tank. It's very easy to keep track of it and know when this tank is getting low. The idea is, is to just take this tank out and fill it without having to switch to the second one. If it has switched, this diverter valve right here, it's now aiming this way. That means it's using propane out of this tank. If this tank runs out, this indicator will go red and it will automatically switch to that tank to give you propane. The propane is only used for heating, so in the summer, uh, it actually doesn't even need to be on. I'll turn this one off. Uh, I always monitor the tanks. I will usually always have the second tank turned off and monitor this one. If I get down and I think during a trip, yeah, it might need to automatically switch, then I'll open the other one. You've even got a third backup tank in here. Even in pretty cold weather, you can usually make it uh, usually almost a week on these two tanks. Uh, on occasion, if it is extremely cold, you will, while the team's at practice or something, you will need to go and find a place to fill propane bottles. Uh, if you look in the compartments in this bus, it is very well equipped. We've got air hoses in here, we've got extension hoses, we've got garden hoses, uh, floor jacks, two of them. One of them is a very low profile jack that you'll put underneath to get it started up and then you can put the larger jack and it's even air powered. There's a three quarter inch impact gun underneath the sofa in the front so that you can actually even change these hub pilot tires. There's spares in the back. Uh, reflector triangles are on the other side. Uh, a slight amount of WD-40 on these springs for these tensioners once in a while is good maintenance. Uh, the other thing that needs to be kept up on, there's touch-up bottles of paint. Here's a spot right here. Now what's caused this is that this door has been overflexed open. And that's what's broke this paint at the hinge to start with. But it needs to be touched up before it becomes a rusty mess. With any of these doors, you have to babysit them a little bit. These are a great big door. If the wind catches them, they pull open very hard. You also have to watch the guys when you're loading and unloading luggage. They have a tendency to stack stuff again the open doors or lean against them. You ha it's hard to be everywhere at once, thus we usually have two drivers. When the guys are doing things, you have to supervise them. That goes for most everything on the bus. Just think of it like you're taking a bunch of, of younger kids places. Okay, in this compartment we have several things. This is where we keep our extension cords. This is where the shore power plug is, where I'm going to plug into the hotel. This has an indicator light right in it that will light up and show that you've got power coming from the hotel. You'll also then need to wait the 10 minutes or so and confirm that you've got it inside. It's always a good idea to remove this and put it down here so that it doesn't get hit and broke. This other large module in here has to do with the engine driven generator. And the only thing you really have to be aware of with it is that it, it cools, it has cooling fans here, so it needs to be kind of kept fairly clean. The other thing let's talk about is lights in the storage base, okay? They are all set up to where they can be on at all times. Uh, so every time you open a compartment, make sure you turn the light off before you close it. Um, a lot of times we use this compartment here for driver's luggage. We try to let the teams use the back and the large bay on the other side. We try to keep this for us. You'll also see that we've got a fitting in here that can be pulled out so that we can run the extension cord out and then close and lock the door to secure the bus. Uh, Propane furnace. These are silicone shut for a reason. Uh, should probably really never be any reason for drivers to access that out on the road. If you're pushing that hard, something's wrong.
If you're twisting that hard, something's wrong. Push in. No. There you go. You got to push and relieve that pressure. Okay, uh, storage bays back here. We've got some light switches back here for interior lights. Okay. One of them is located right here. On off. There again, these are hooked up all the time, so you got to turn them off. Um, as you can see, we have broken lights in here. That's from the team stacking stuff in here and banging the lights. You got to supervise them a little bit, be a little bit careful. Uh, always monitor if you're getting water uh, in any of these storage bays back here. They have done very well at staying water tight. Uh, if you do get water, make sure that you mop it up, and then we're going to try and track the water and figure out where it's coming in. Um, this light switch is hot all the time. You've also got an additional light switch back here in the back that runs off the marker lights. In other words, it's only going to have power this switch right here, if the marker lights are on, it's going to light this light. Uh, not really a whole lot of reason to use that one too much. The others are pretty adequate. Um, we've obviously got an issue right here. This weather strip has shrunk, and we've got a gap here. So we're going to have a water leak. We're going to need to fix that. These are the types of things that have to be continually monitored on the bus so that we can keep it in good repair and in good working order. Uh, you can also see where things are kind of beat up a little bit. You got to watch them as they're putting the bags in and out and uh, try not to get the bus chipped up. If it gets a chip, we need to get the touch-up paint, touch it up before it's a big rusty mess. Uh, be aware of wires. We've got wires going in and out in places here, so you have to kind of watch that with bags of anything getting snagged there. Uh, down this side... We've pretty much talked about everything. We've got another propane furnace. We've got our battery compartment where a lot of our stuff is, our reflectors, oil, cleaners, all that type of stuff. These wood blocks and these plastic things, I have these in here so that if you have to work on the bus, you can throw those down underneath the tire and pull onto the tire to get a little more clearance so that you can get underneath easier. Washer fluid. Uh, the gas cans are in here because I one time had to get gasoline because of gelled fuel at 40 below zero in St. Louis. Uh, other thing I can think about is light switches. The light switches on the inside are marked, but people always tend to turn on these outside scare lights. They walk in here and flip all four on. Uh, watch that and turn the other lights off on the outside. If you're backing around at night, you can certainly turn those on and that will be helpful uh, for you seeing back and around. 